The great Peter Williams, thank you for joining us on Gate World, and thank you for coming back to GateCon this year. Hey, my pleasure. You know, they send me a ticket, I come. <laughs> How has your convention experience been this weekend? Well, first of all, it's been a little smaller than we're used to, but I think that's uh, everybody reawakening out of the pandemic. Um, it's, so it's understandable. Um, small but sweet, though, I tell you. It was more intimate than usual, even though, and this is one of the more intimate cons. So it's been excellent, just excellent. It's a special event. This is only my second time, but yeah. I know folks here already, and I've, you meet new people every, every year, and what they say is true. GayCon really is a family. And it's it a really is. a special kind of event. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, you know what? We, you get uh, younger and younger fans all the time, but it's not limited to younger fans. There were a couple of couples here who were bringing their spouses for the first time, I found. And uh, that's always interesting because sometimes the spouses come, they're very they're skeptical of the scene, but they usually leave with a big smile on their faces. Mm -hmm. Well, we're introducing our kids to Stargate for the first time. Mm -hmm. And of course, they love Apophis. They love yeah. the big, colorful characters. Yes, the, yes, yes. The flanged voices yes. of the, the Goa Wood. That's right, the glowing eyes. So every, even though it's been a lot of years since you guys shot, it's, yeah. everything is, is fresh for us who continue to enjoy it year after year. Yes, yes. I met a fan here who was watching, it was only up to the third season. She's got so much way, so much further to go, you know. Yeah. So much more Apophis ahead of her. Well, yes, at least for a couple of years, and then there'll be some long breaks, but you know, you always find him again. He always comes back somehow. And they kept bringing you back for, they're much more than cameos, right? They're, they're important roles in, in some of these episodes yeah, yeah. that, uh, you know, Chris Judge writes you as, That's uh, right. as a doctor in his hallucination yeah. in The Changeling. That's right. And then Apophis is an alternate timeline in Mobius. And yes. you've got some fun stuff to kind of chew on and get yes, back and play. Yes, yes, yes. Well, you know, when uh, I see Amanda at cons, People mm -hmm. often ask her who her favorite bad guy was. And I don't know if you heard her say this, uh, but she always says Apophis because you never forget your first. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a cliche line, but I have yeah. been known to throw it around from time to time myself. Yeah, you never do forget your first. Um, uh, and uh, better if they're a bad guy. Uh, Amanda is the, probably the singular most popular Stargate character around, you know, Stargate actor. Um, I find her fandom to be the most vocal, the most loyal, and probably the most extensive, even on par with Richard Dean, for instance. Yeah, this, the Amanda Tapping, she has her Sanctuary people, she has her, um, her Make-A-Wish Foundation people, she has her Samantha Carter, her Carterites. And of course, now she's a director in her own right. She's, so she's she's, um, she's a got hot that. director. Yeah, she's very, very much in demand. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. What uh, when you look back on these years, uh, what are the feelings that that surface? What are the memories of of working with this cast and working with this crew and the directors that you've gotten to know so well over the years? First of all, I didn't know most of the cast when I was actually shooting Stargate. I've got, gotten to know them afterwards at these uh, these conventions worldwide. You know, you you run into you run into somebody like uh, David Nickel, for example, in Auckland, New Zealand, and he was in Atlantis, and I never knew him. I never knew him before. Right. Yeah, he was he was a local actor, but we never went for the same parts or anything like that. But he's become one of my best friends. I like to use him as, a, as an example because he's such a cool guy. Um, then you look at the Paulie McGillians and the David Hewlett's. Uh, you don't find guys that are as well talked about in the industry like those two. Amazing. Um, I, I tend to measure it though against my own feelings for Star Trek. I was raised on Star Trek. As a, the original uh, yeah, the original television series before the movies, fr movie franchises, uh, you know, Spock and Bones and and uh, and, and and Shatner and mm -hmm. you know and um, Uhuru and you know they were all my um, my heroes, and I've gotten to meet all of them too. I met most of them, anyway, 
Uh, and um, to think I'm now like that for some others is quite a trip, head trip. Yeah, yeah. for a lot of others. It's, yeah. Stargate is a special show. Stargate matters to us. Yes, I can see that. I can see that. So I've made, a, I've made an effort to you know, join up. I see you online, for example. I've made an effort to, to, uh, to interact with the fandom on Twitter, particularly, and Facebook. Uh, not so much Facebook now, but more Twitter. <clears throat> yeah, you're always joining in the fun. I posted mm -hmm. for the, the when the 25th came up. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, I don't know if I was the one who posted it, but I had I'd used it a few years earlier. The image from when Children of the Gods first premiered, there was the magazine cover that had Apophis on the front, and it was it was advertising Children of the Gods, the new yes, Stargate show yes, was premiering, yes, and yes. The, the little label next to Apophis <laughs> is Christopher Judge. I know. <laughs> Did I get it from you? I might have gotten it from you, actually. But I, I think I have a, a JPEG of that uh, that little misprint. Yeah, humbling, I imagine. But you know what? It opens me up to a story. To tell you the truth, when Children of the Gods first came out, it was MGM and Showtime doing the publicity. For some reason, somebody at the head office sent me three huge thick binders, each one that thick, of all the clippings from all the TV stations in, in the United States. And um, all the, all the write-ups from TV guides in little towns, big towns, all kinds of towns. And um, I think I only kept one, but for, for most, of the, most of the images were either Richard Dean Anderson or Apophis. Oh. Yeah, it was even more than the regular cast. So the good guy or the bad guy, yeah, that sort of thing. So I felt very much included. That's never happened to me before or since, to be included in the marketing plan like that. That's fantastic. Yeah. Apophis was, was sort of a reincarnation of Ra. He was yes, the big bad yes, for the yes, show for a yes. long time. Well, you know how the mythology goes. Ra, the, 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 god of, the sun god, god of the day, Apophis, serpent god, god of the night, enjoying battle. Ra always wins, sun always rises, but night always comes as well. So it's like, a, and, they're, and they're brothers in Greek mythology, I believe. Yeah. Well, I told the story, we were up on stage together, and I told the story of how the role that you played in the formation of Gate World more than 20 years ago. I was watching Jolinar's Memories and yeah. your big comeback, the big shocking reveal at the end of, of that episode in season three was mm -hmm. Naonak reveals his mask and it's Apophis reborn. Yes, yes. Uh, it's such a fantastic moment of television, moment of science fiction, and it launched me on, on this grand adventure. So first of all, thank mm -hmm. you for your, the part that you played in that. You're welcome. And I, let's also spare mention for Dion Johnson, who actually played Naonak until the reveal. Dion Johnson has gone on to some great things. He's, uh, you know, he's a much in demand actor now. I think he's based in the States. Um, but he played Neonak. I was busy doing something else during the days that they were shooting Neonak before the reveal. So fortunately, I was free by the time of the reveal so they could use my real face. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, that, that reeled in a lot of folks. They tended to save Apophis for season openers, Ratings week, double episodes, and season closers, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So I wasn't around all the time, but when I came, boy, mm -hmm. what a bang. And they trained us when I put Serpent in the title. Yes. You know that it's Apophis, <laughs> and then, of course, That's not right. for Jolinar's memories, it's a big yes. surprise. Yes, yes. And uh, is it true that you, you sort of, to keep the secret, you mm -hmm. deferred your credit to the end of the episode? That is correct. Uh, it, it, uh, that is mostly correct. It could also have been that the credit was deferred for me, <laughs> but I wouldn't have minded anyway. I think it's great. Yeah, yeah. super. Such a fantastic reveal. Well, mm -hmm. Apophis does so much, kind of, he's, he's an over-the-top villain. He's very colorful. He's golden in particular. Yeah. Uh, uh, he's, he chews some scenery in his time, but then you get an episode like Serpent Song, Yeah. where you see the, the dimensionality and yeah. the cracks yeah. in Apophis. And then, of course, we see the host in this episode yeah. as he lays dying in the SGC infirmary. You have no idea what that episode meant to me. Um, I, I had become used to being used very sparsely, albeit splashily, but to have scene after scene after scene with the main cast members was a real joy, a real pleasure, a real, real bonus.
and that was very significant to that episode was they were there's a, a portion of the episode where they're just taking turns yes coming in to have a scene one after the other yeah, yeah. and it's interesting because I was uh, I was not very mobile I was actually on a gurney in a straitjacket for the entire time and uh, aged to a to a decrepit state so really non-threatening and I think that aided in the pathos of the situation that the host found himself in. Uh, every now and then, Apophis would break through in the consciousness and um, be a little more threatening. But yeah, it was, it was a real dance, lovely, lovely, lovely episode. Yeah, and the dynamic that I remember with, with Michael Shanks <laughs> in particular was there's one scene where he's, he and Tilk are pretty happy to just watch this guy die. Yeah. But then the host comes out, and Daniel ends up performing this sort of, of last rites ritual for the host. Yeah. And it's such I, a beautiful scene. I love that you mentioned that, too. You know, of course, at the center of that dynamic is the love of a woman, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Share, who I had actually stolen from Daniel, was his, uh, was his on-screen lady, and it turned out to be his off-screen lady as well. So even as actors, we had that um, little dynamic of two bulls and one heifer, <laughs> if you will. You know, it was like, uh, it, was, it was art imitating life. Yeah. And, I, and I met her before he met her. He wound up marrying her in real life, but uh, you know, that's the backstory. So there was that, you know, there was that to draw on. Well, we should say before we move on from Stargate, there's mm -hmm. one more big reveal. It wasn't a, a big part for you when they brought you back in Stargate Continuum. Yes. But we've got we've got Cliffy and a room full of system lords. Yeah. yeah. And then we see in this alternate reality, Apophis mm -hmm. is there too, and he's yeah. on his knees. Yes. You remember working on this scene at this point? With I do. You know, the thing that sticks that out most know. in my mind sticks out most in my mind is that as a guy who on the show had the benefit of the most iconic costumes. I was in all gray, a very bland costume for this, uh, this uh, continuum. Mm -hmm. uh, probably uh, an attempt to depict how far Apophis had fallen. Mm -hmm. He had literally been brought to his knees. Brought to his knees and uh, just one of the pack and uh, vanquished in the end by a vengeful bow. Um, I didn't realize just how memorable that very brief scene would be, but it turned out to be. A lot of people remember that. And it was the last time we saw Apophis in the franchise. So far? So far. <laughs> yeah. Before I let you go, one of my favorite modern series is The Expanse. Yes. And uh, Apophis, no, it's not Apophis. <laughs> Peter shows up on The Expanse. Uh, what brought you to this show and what do you remember about, about this role? Uh, what I remember about this role, a couple of things. I played a character, first of all, like, The Expanse is based on books. Yeah. Uh, the, the books, The Expanse. And um, the character I played in, uh, in the show was a character in the book whose name was Santichai Suputayaporn. And in the books, he is 82 years old. So when I read for that, I go, you know what? They're going to have to take some license with that because I'm not 82. <laughs> I get the part, and it turns out they scripted him, you know, several decades younger. So Santichai Suputayaporn was a um, a spaceship commander, I guess, pilot, uh, and he and his wife had this little, this, this um, rust, rust bucket, I think it's been referred to as, that would ply the, the beltway in the, in the universe. And um, the girl they cast as my wife had been cast as my wife in something prior to that. Is that right? <laughs> yes. Totally unbeknownst to either of us, we were cast as husband and wife again. Um, I got a lot of attention from Stargate fans. Mm. I, um, I actually enjoyed The Expanse because the Belter, the Belter dialect was based loosely on, a, a Caribbean, on Caribbean uh, patois, mm. which I'm quite well versed in, being from Jamaica. So the, um, 
The audition was a piece of cake. The read-through was great. People were scribbling down changes as I made them. And I feel like I took to the accent quite well. However, it doesn't translate very well to an actor's reel because it sounds like I'm garbling everything I say, mm. you know. Unless you actually know the, the Belter language. Yeah. You would think that these people aren't speaking any recognizable language. Well, what a great character and, and what a great actor to see as a belter. Listen, I, to this day I get people making comments about that yeah. and saying, you shouldn't have killed him, but of course I'm used to dying, so it was <laughs> no sweat, no sweat. Well, last but not mm -hmm. least, what are you doing right now or what, uh, what are you hoping to, to come down the pipe next. What do you look for in a role that, that you, you want to grab onto and say, yeah, this is what I want to do? It's pretty much a common fallacy that we have a choice of what we do, you know. Things, um, things come your way, you either take them or you don't. I've actually had the largesse recently to turn down work. Uh, I am, the next thing on my plate is I am doing a Hallmark romance. Is that right? Yeah, when I go back, uh, so this month I'll be doing a show. I probably should keep the name under wraps because it hasn't been okay. been said, in, in, and it sounds like a porn anyway. You know how these hallmarks are? They all right. I'll tell you. It's called um, All Aboard for Love, I believe it's called. It's not been shot yet. It'll be shot this month. And is that um, shooting here in town? No, it shoots in Toronto. Okay, and uh, I'm based in the east now. And um, I'm happy to say that I get auditions for Silver Foxes now, mm -hmm. a little bit older, a little bit wiser, and, um, and I'm still in the game, so that's good. Um, I'll be doing that, and I have a couple other irons in the fire that I'm not at liberty to speak about at this moment. Good. Well, we'll be on the lookout. We'll be excited. Uh, Peter, thanks so much for sitting down and giving us some of your time. It's a real treat. Pleasure, Darren. Thank you very much. GateCon, big up, Gate World, Gate, big up. <laughs>